the Biden administration has started a new AI safety consortium. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Well, once again, we are seeing how increasingly significant AI is in the political landscape, with the latest news being that the White House has announced a new AI safety coalition that they're calling the AI Safety Institute Consortium. It is apparently a coalition for the safe development and deployment of generative AI and includes not only the usual suspects from the AI space, the Microsofts, Googles, Apples, Metas, and OpenAIs, but also a number of government agencies, a set of academic institutions, and even other companies outside of AI like Northrop Grumman, BP, Qualcomm, and MasterCard. The consortium was announced by Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo, who said in a statement, the U.S. government has a significant role to play in setting the standards and developing the tools we need to mitigate the risks and harness the immense potential of artificial intelligence. President Biden directed us to pull every lever to accomplish two key goals, set safety standards and protect our innovation ecosystem. That's precisely what the U.S. AI Safety Institute Consortium is set up to help us do. Overall, they say that the consortium includes more than 200 member companies and organizations. And it really is basically everyone. Accenture, Adobe, AMD, Bank of America, Booz Allen Hamilton, BP, Canva, Carnegie Mellon, Citigroup, etc., etc., etc. I won't go through the entire alphabet. Now, it is not exactly clear what this consortium will actually do. They say that they're tasked with working on the priority actions that were outlined in the executive order from last year that includes, quote, developing guidelines for red teaming, capability evaluations, risk management, safety and security, and watermarking synthetic content. But what each of these members will contribute to this consortium, how the consortium will be run, who will be leading it, who will be prioritizing these things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is all a little bit open right now. Then again, that's probably because they're not sure yet. Now, meanwhile, over in the UK, the AI Safety Institute there has just published its third progress report. Chair Ian Hogarth wrote about a few different elements. First, they are expanding the team. They've announced a few key executive hires, as well, they say, as onboarding 23 technical researchers with an aim to grow a team of 50 to 60 by the end of 2024. They published the principles behind the International Scientific Report on Advanced AI Safety, which they said was a landmark paper sharing the latest research and opinions from the world's leading AI experts, including Turing Award winner Yashua Bengio. And they say they've begun pre-deployment testing for potentially harmful capabilities on advanced AI systems. Now, they say that that testing is going to focus on a few different areas. The first is misuse, or as they put it, assessing the extent to which advanced AI systems meaningfully lower barriers for human attackers seeking to cause real-world harm. They have specific interest in chemical and biological capabilities, as well as cyber offense capabilities. Next, they want to focus on societal impacts, including, quote, the extent to which people are affected by interacting with such systems. A third focus is autonomous systems, specifically the ability for systems to autonomously replicate, deceive humans, and create more powerful AI models. And finally, a fourth focus is safeguards. They also flagged that there would be another set of upcoming AI safety summits, with one happening in South Korea and a third expected to happen in France. Now, the Department of Commerce wasn't the only group talking about AI in the U.S. government. The FCC has officially made AI-generated voices and robocalls illegal. This is, of course, a response in part to that AI-generated President Biden that was calling New Hampshire Democrats a couple weeks ago. But that was really just a catalyst to get moving on an issue which everyone already knew was going to be an issue. Said FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel in a statement, Bad actors are using AI-generated voices in unsolicited robocalls to extort vulnerable family members, imitate celebrities, and misinform voters. We're putting the fraudsters behind these robocalls on notice. Now, this ruling was adopted by the FCC unanimously, and in addition to making this type of activity illegal, also apparently gives state attorneys general what they call new tools to crack down. Finally today, we have to talk about ARM. This is, of course, a British chip designer that is majority owned by SoftBank, and in their recent earnings report, they announced that they made a record $824 million in sales last quarter and projected as much as $900 million for this quarter. Both figures were significantly ahead of what Wall Street analysts expected, and the stock price has gone up 48% since this earnings report was released. The company's executives explicitly called out AI as having given the results a boost. Now, one question is whether this is an area where the market is getting out ahead of itself. The Wall Street Journal published a chart that showed a number of different companies in terms of their share price as a multiple of forward earnings. NVIDIA sits somewhere around 35, AMD sits somewhere around 45, and ARM is now up approaching 100. The WSJ asks, ARM is doing very well these days, but is it doing three times as well as NVIDIA? 
And this type of thing is the reason why, despite the fact that AI actually is showing up in company performance already, there's still some people who think that the market is getting ahead of itself. I think in some ways we are a little bit trapped by priors and unable in general to imagine that both might be true simultaneously, that AI is in fact every bit as disruptive as it seems, and that indeed it's more economically relevant earlier than other previous technology cycles, but there could still be on top of that a little hint, a whiff if you will, of irrational exuberance. Of course to me it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down anytime soon, but we will have to see. However that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI breakdown.